as I am sure everyone has experienced, sometimes random ideas sneak up on you and whack you over the head. This is one such idea. As the ship overviews are certainly the most popular of my videos, I thought, hey, I find these little interesting stories to go along with them. Why not make these into their own videos? So, here we are. You all get a twofer today as I post this alongside the first British Battlecruiser video. This series, though, will be somewhat more random and scattershot on postings, as it will largely be when I find interesting stories in my research that I think deserve their own little short video. Instead of just shoving them into an overview where you might miss them or just not pay attention to them. I have a couple of these things I can do, but past that, we'll see what comes up in the research. For this first one, though, tell me, did any of you know that Admiral Halsey's son, William Halsey III, served on Saratoga during World War II? This was, of course, well after Halsey the Admiral was in command of the ship. By this point, he had moved on to commanding fleets, or at least battle groups, not individual ships. It's still possible, though, that Halsey the Younger chose to serve on Sarah as a way to not serve directly under his father, who by this point was associated much more with the Enterprise. At any rate, and the reason why I'm doing this video, during the time Sarah served around Guadalcanal, there's a story from when she was at Nomea. At this point, Bill Halsey, as I'm going to call him to differentiate from his more famous father, was working as an aviation supply officer. This is just the kind of low-key job where few people knew him personally, and even fewer would know what his name was. The young supply officer could kind of skirt around his famous name and just do his job, for the most part. The story I want to tell comes in when, obviously not knowing his name, an aviation machinist mate came aboard wanting to find an ignition harness for Admiral Halsey's personal plane. Bill gave it to him without complaint, even though Sarah would only have four spares left after he did. Of course, cue a couple weeks later, and the same man would return wanting another harness. Bill Halsey gave it to him again, though he was now down to three spares for the 90-odd planes aboard Saratoga. At this point, you can probably guess where this is going. Well, another two weeks later, seriously, what was the Elder Halsey putting his poor plane through that he keeps breaking these things? And Bill would get the same request again. This time it was by phone and by an officer he didn't know. Probably thoroughly sick of his daddy breaking his spare ignition harnesses by this point, Bill Halsey denied the request. I will directly quote the book here, since it's an excellent little passage to go over. I guess maybe you don't understand, said the officer. This harness is for Admiral Halsey's plane. Oh, I understand all right, Bill responded. You can tell Admiral Halsey to shove it in his ear. The voice on the phone demanded, What is your name, sir? William Frederick Halsey, Bill responded, then hung up. Nothing more was heard of the incident. I'm going to be honest, this little exchange is just... Look, imagine the face of that poor officer when he was probably thinking, who's this little, insert not safe for YouTube language here, who's trying to tell off Bull Halsey, just to get hit with... Oh, his son. Oh dear. Stories like this are the bread and butter of true historians. Personal stories that seem so impossible, but actually happened. Because, really, who would otherwise believe that Admiral Halsey, Bull Halsey, the hard-ass of the Navy, got told off by his own namesake son, who just happened to be serving on the same ship he had captained a decade or so before, when that ship just happened to be directly under his command. It's a fun story and one I felt it needed to be told to a larger audience. Such as my audience is large at this point, anyway. On that note, though, there's another little excerpt from Bill Halsey I want to share. This one rather less amusing and rather more poignant. In the aftermath of Bikini and Crossroads, he would eventually send a letter to a shipmate. That letter read, at least in part, 
I remember when I read in the New York Times shortly after the war that the Saratoga had been sunk during the Bikini Atom Bomb tests. A shiver ran through my spine and tears welled up in my eyes. Strange how one could get so sentimental about an inanimate object. A bunch of steel, nuts, and bolts. Of course, it is much more. Shipmates, shared experiences, etc. Remember, these ships, be it World War II, old tall ships, modern supercarriers, their crew can become attached to them. To them, these aren't just a big hunk of metal or a collection of wood and sails. They're the next best thing to living beings, keeping you alive forming and forming so many memories with your crewmates. These ships mean something. I do admit to being biased, as I said in the Saratoga video, in regards to this particular ship, though. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll have another one of these videos up when I find another story I feel deserves sharing. This particular story came from USS Saratoga CV-3, an illustrated history of the legendary aircraft carrier, 1927-1946, by John Fry. See you in the next video.